Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. For more than 50 years, Wild Kingdom explored wildlife and our natural world. Tonight's episode, and many others, focus on the timeless value of wildlife conservation. Wild Kingdom played a critical role in changing public attitudes about the importance of animals for the health of our planet and our own quality of life. We challenge viewers to learn about animals and get involved in conservation in their local communities. That call to action resulted in more visits to local zoos, nature preserves, and even observing animals in their natural habitats. And that connection with animals benefits all of us in the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. One of Australia's most interesting predators is a member of the canid family, the wild dog known as the dingo. These animals are skilled hunters with strong pack instincts, and the young are quickly indoctrinated into the arts of surviving and hunting. As they learn from their mother, or often from both parents, or the pack as a whole, they encounter many other animals which share their habitat, such as three of the animals for which Australia is noted. The kangaroo, which leaps about on powerful hind legs. The sturdy, bear-like but timid wombat, which feeds mostly on plants. And the huge ostrich-like flightless bird known as the emu. Our story of a dingo family starts after the pups are born. Here, in the eucalyptus forest country of southeastern Australia, the terrain is ideal habitat for them, and we call it the land of the dingo. Spring does not appear slowly here. It explodes into being, densely carpeting hillsides with flamboyant colors, and bringing a new vibrancy to the countryside, which affects all living things. A mob of kangaroos relax, secure under the watchful protection provided by the boss kangaroo. There's nothing to fear from the pair of huge emus feeding casually nearby. And these giant flightless birds themselves have no real natural enemies once they've grown to this size. Like the kangaroos, which feed on vegetation, the emus are primarily plant eaters, feeding mostly on succulent sprouts. They rarely become excited and pay little attention to another resident of the eucalyptus forest, the koala. Also a vegetarian, the koala carries her baby on her back keeping it safe from the one serious enemy to almost all young animals in this habitat, the dingo. Sometimes these wild dogs travel in small packs and they're highly intelligent. The white one leading them has a mate nearby who not very long ago gave birth to a fine litter of pups. Like most babies in nature, they're almost always hungry. 
and the mother dingo provides them the nourishing milk they need to grow into strong young hunters. Usually, the dingoes are yellowish, but occasionally black and tan, or even white. Except at times like this, dingoes are almost always searching for food. That's why the koala rarely ventures to ground level with her baby. Sometimes, running in small packs, they'll hunt animals as large as kangaroos. Right now, they're looking for little mice hiding under fallen tree stumps. This pack will remain hereabouts until the new puppies are big enough to run with the grown-ups as full-fledged hunters. But that will take a few months. The mother dingo has only one litter a year, and she's very devoted to her puppies. One by one, she cleans them often and thoroughly, never letting any wastes build up in the den area. It's a wonderfully happy home life for the puppies, and there's little the mother dingo has to fear for their safety. Nevertheless, she watches anything moving nearby. A spiny echidna is no threat whatever. It's primarily an insect eater. But now she catches scent of a real danger to her pups. A carpet python. She's quick in reacting to the scent, knowing the snake could very easily swallow one of the tiny helpless puppies. Instinctively, she begins to move her entire litter out of this suddenly dangerous area to a place where they'll be safer. teeth from injuring the tender little animals. And it takes time to carry each one safely away from the danger zone. The big python has detected the puppies. are safe, and now they will still have a chance to grow up and become active members of the dingo pack. The dingo puppies grew rapidly, and by the time they were two months old and very active, spring was at its height and flowers were blooming everywhere. The pups are much bigger now. Some enjoy taking pleasant little naps under a warm midday sun. Others are active bundles of energy and know that by watching and following the leader of the dingo pack, they'll learn important lessons in hunting. The sleepy pups don't intend being left behind. One of the pups has sighted the object of today's first lesson, a spiny echidna. The pack leader knows the echidna's spines are extremely sharp and dangerous to an attacker. He 
demonstrates how to overcome such a seemingly invulnerable defense. The secret is to dig below the echidna and try to reach its soft underbelly because it's futile and painful to bite at the sharp spines. The white pup pays close attention from a distance, unlike a litter mate who tries to help but doesn't really know what to do. White Pop's learning that it's a pretty frustrating business to try to penetrate an echidna's defenses. Even the most determined assault sometimes fails. The pup suddenly turns his attention to some newcomers on the scene, a pair of black snakes engaged in their springtime mating ritual, which begins by intertwining their upper bodies. This pup and his litter mate have seen such snakes before and are curious but cautious. Black snakes are venomous but not usually aggressive and rarely will bite unless cornered or attacked. With the ritual concluded, they go their individual ways. This one heads toward a swampy area to hunt frogs and perhaps catch a mouse or lizard on the way. Two bolder pups follow for a closer look at the reptile, but they're careful not to molest the snake. The dingo's favorite prey is rabbit, and since rabbits abound in this habitat, chases are daily occurrences. There's always something new for the pups to see, since so many different animals share their habitat, such as this stump-tailed lizard. It doesn't have great speed or agility to escape, and so it depends on another type of defense to protect itself against dingo attacks. It's a defense this pup is about to discover an explosive hissing sound. It's one more good lesson learned by the dingo. But there are many other lessons yet to come. When one of Australia's many marsupials a full-grown brush-tailed possum appears from out of the undergrowth. The pups rise to the adventure. The 
possum, however, puts on such a ferocious defense that the pups hesitate. That's just the break the possum wanted. The animal quickly utilizes his only sure defense against dingo attack. Up here, he'll be safe from Australia's largest predator and can watch undisturbed what happens below as the dingo pups look for other exciting things to learn which will prepare them for the future. By the time they were three months old, the dingo pups had developed insatiable curiosity which prompted them to thoroughly explore their new surroundings. The time is approaching when the rapidly growing dingo pups will be leaving this pleasant area where they've spent their puppyhood. Thus far, they've seen only a small portion of their world, but they'll soon begin to range far more widely and come into closer contact with other animals. They'll learn that some animals will not tolerate being pestered by curious dingo pups. The emus will soon be nesting, and their chicks are quite vulnerable to attack from dingoes. There's no time when the wild dogs are welcome. When the dingo pups are full grown, they'll prey on wombats. This pair is busily at work on a burrow where they'll raise their new family. They're husky animals and too big yet for the white pup to attack. Someday, when an opportunity like this presents itself to catch a full grown wombat, there will be no hesitation at all on the part of the dingo, but not yet. Obviously, the wombats know they're in no real danger from the little predator at this time, and they pay no attention to the intruder. Digging in pairs, the wombat behind gets the worst of it, and it doesn't improve his disposition to be subjected to a face full of dirt from one end and a possible threat from the other. The dingo pups aren't yet big enough to threaten kangaroos either. But the boss kangaroo keeps a wary eye on them, knowing that one day they'll definitely be a peril to his mob. The pups have all learned one prime lesson from the adults that almost every animal encountered, such as this goanna, has some sort of good defense. Where the lizard's concerned, it's a whipping tail, as well as a mouth that can deliver a very painful bite. It's hard to get past such defenses. If the intent were really to kill the goanna, the adult dingo could do so. Right now, He's merely giving the pups a lesson on how to approach the powerful lizard without getting hurt. It's a lesson well taught. The goanna's a fearsome looking adversary, and for the time being, there is no inclination among the pups to approach. The next lesson for the pups is how to actually attack a large goanna. The attack must be at the base of the neck to avoid the big lizard's bite. This goanna has been lucky enough to use the heavy cover to escape. Kangaroos also are very vulnerable to dingo attack. So when danger is near, the young stay safe in pouches. 
For dingoes, a great delicacy is birds. This spur-wing plover, seen by the pup, has chicks hidden in the grass. The pup might find and devour them, so she leads him away by pretending to be injured and unable to fly far. From above, her mace attack moves the pup away some. It's this distraction of diving and screeching which fools the pup and constantly draws him farther away from where the plover's chicks are hiding. up, not realizing that he was almost standing on the babies. For the dingo pups, this land in which they were born holds new excitement every day, new lessons to learn, and new things to see and do. The dingo pups have seen only a small portion of this beautiful land. They are a part of this country's grandeur, part of the intricate and delicate balance of nature. Their lives will be spent roaming the endless miles of this forest country with its lush greens and lovely flowers, a land they will soon know even better. The pups are becoming adults and now they will begin to expand their horizons and explore even more of this land of the dingo. The eucalyptus forest terrain of Australia is still fairly wild country, a perfect habitat for many unusual forms of wildlife which live there and nowhere else in the world. Yet, little by little, even these forests have begun dwindling in size as a natural habitat, since man increases his own horizons and expands into new areas. It seems almost certain that one day he may be competing for the same territory which is so essential to the animal species unique to southeastern Australia's eucalyptus forest. Now, while it is still economically feasible, there is a need to set aside sizable tracts of such natural habitat for these animals, safe from man's encroachment. If this is done, there will be little need to fear that Australia's unusual animals will ever disappear from the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.